Hello everyone, my name is Matthias. I'm the technical support engineer for Trimble Seed Ignition Software. And today it's gonna be another video called Ecognition Deconstructed. And I'm gonna talk about the multi-threshold segmentation. This segmentation algorithm is really nice. It's simply based on multiple thresholds as the name indicates and on one single layer. And I will show you first a little bit about the theory of this algorithm and afterwards I will show you four different use cases. Okay, here the theory. So this is a top-down approach which splits the domain into objects based on user-defined pixel threshold values. And then the generated objects can be assigned to a class or be unclassified. So you instantly can classify your image objects. And it's based on multiple thresholds, so not a single one, you can use just one, but using multiple thresholds is just more fun. And if you define multiple thresholds, they have to be in an ascending order. Let's have a look at the example on the right hand side. If we, for example, just set one threshold um, to five in this example, all values lower than five will be put into one image object and one class and all values higher than five into another class. Okay. In this case, all values equal to five and smaller are put into the red class and the others into a class unclassified. All right, so that was already the theory part. Now we're gonna have a look at four different use cases and I bet afterwards you're gonna love this algorithm and you're gonna use it in your analysis. Our first example is an agricultural area. Here I think that's somewhere in Jordan. And first I calculated the NDVI. So that's what you see on the top pane. I did that with the layer arithmetics algorithm and simply used the calculation, the formula for the NDVI. And based on this layer, we're gonna use the multi-threshold segmentation. Here on the right hand side, you see the algorithm parameters for the multi-threshold segmentation. And I'm briefly gonna explain some of these settings. So very important is the image layer. In this case, I use the NDVI. And as stated before, this algorithm only works on one layer. So we only have the NDVI here for this segmentation. Then we have the minimum object size set to 50. So the minimum object size is 50 pixels. So we do not get very small objects. And then finally, the thresholds. Uh, as said before, again, they have to be in ascending order. So all values that are lower than 0.1 are gonna be put into the class unclassified, values between 0.1 and one into the class vegetation, and values higher than one again into the class unclassified. So this segments our image and also classifies into these two classes, in this case, unclassified and vegetation. Let's have a look how this plays out when we execute it. Here we are. So let's have a look at the segmentation result. So in this case, you see two classes. One is green, which is the vegetation class and transparent is my unclassified class. And now all image objects that are classified as vegetation have values between 0.1 and one in the NDVI. And the unclassified class now has very low NDVI values, lower than 0.1. And maybe also values higher than one, but they shouldn't exist based on the nature of the formula. I've prepared a second multi-threshold segmentation algorithm. Here, as you see in the process tree, it is a third process. And now we're gonna focus this segmentation onto the class vegetation. So we define that in the domain. Uh, we are working on the image object level and define the class filter as vegetation. Okay, so we're only applying this one to the class vegetation. In the algorithm parameters, we again have the image layer NDVI, minimum object size 
50, so it's the same as before. But now in this case, in the thresholds, we're gonna discriminate into three different classes, low, medium, and high, based on the NDVI. So all values lower than 0.3 gonna be put into the class low, between 0.3 and 0.5 into the class medium, and the rest higher than 0.5 into the class high. And again, this only applied in the vegetation class, so unclassified stays untouched. Okay, let's check the result. You see we generated more objects. Gonna unfold the classification so you see it. So red represents the class low, yellow medium and green high. And this now corresponds to the NDVI values that we've calculated previously. Right, so red lower than 0 0.3, yellow between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, and green, the high class is higher than 0 0.5. Let's jump to our second example. Here we have a RGB and near infrared image. We have a digital surface model and a digital terrain model. And first what I did was pre-processing, so I calculated additional layers. Here the NDSM, and the NDVI with the layer arithmetics algorithm. Then I just ran a median filter over the NDSM to smoothen that one. And here you see the additional layers that I calculated. So on the left hand side, the NDSM, so the height of the features, and on the right hand side, the NDVI. Now let's assume we have a vegetation mask. Um, I did a fast classification of vegetation but let's assume you have a vector layer that you added into your project and you want to estimate or discriminate different forest heights. And that can easily be done if you have uh, the height of the features. Uh, we have it in this case, the NDSM. So it's simply gonna use the multi-threshold segmentation, focus onto the class vegetation again. So this is defined in the domain. The image layer in this case is going to be the NDSM, so the height of the features. And here we set the threshold, so everything that's lower than one meter is going to be put into the class other vegetation. Between one and five into low forest, between five and ten into medium forest, and higher than ten is high forest. So we're actually kicking out very low vegetation um, into the class other vegetation, and the rest is going to be classified into three different forest classes. And when I execute that one, you're gonna see the result is that we've in this beige color other vegetation, so vegetation that is not elevated or lower than one meter, and the other forested areas are discriminated into these height classes. And that's just uh, one line of code, and you've classified your forested areas into four different classes. I think that's very cool. And uh, we also set uh, minimal object size, I guess, to 100. Yeah. So we only have fairly large image objects. And that's the result. So on the left hand side in this area, you see other vegetation, very low vegetation. That's probably not forest. And all areas higher than one meter are then classified into these different height classes. Okay. Uh, third example. So the same area. Same data, RGB, and we just gonna use DTM in this case. Again, I filtered here in this case DTM and then calculated the aspect of the DTM. I was using the median filter algorithm as well as the surface calculation algorithm. That's the result on the right hand side of the aspect. So you see where the different sides of the mountains are facing to and now we're going to use the multi threshold segmentation to actually classify the direction into east north west south right four directions so let's execute that one and then we, you have this uh, classification or in my case it looks like that so we have classified the aspect that we've calculated in the cognition into these four classes now you instantly see where the areas are that are facing south and that these areas would be more interesting to build a house on, right? At least for me. So that's the last example. Now let's assume you have an area and you also have a classification that was done, let's say, 10 years ago and 
you have that in raster format. So let's display that one. So you have this classification of another time step as a raster. In this case, three different classes, one equals to water, two non-vegetation and three vegetation. And now you can guess, I'm gonna use the multi threshold segmentation actually to classify the image based on this raster layer. So we simply have to know which um, value equals which class. So in our case, one equals water, then two equals non-vegetation and three equals vegetation. And as you see here, that's actually a shortcut that I'm using. I'm simply, I haven't created a class yet. I'm simply typing in the, in the class and then automatically this class description window pops up if the class doesn't exist yet. That's just a shortcut for the pros. Okay, I execute it, it doesn't work. Why? Right, forgot to define the layer. It makes sense, so image layer has to be in this case classification, okay? So this algorithm is focusing on this classification layer. And what we have now is we classified, or we did the segmentation based on our raster classification and instantly have the classification as image objects in our project. So that's one line of code and there you have your classification from time step one. You also could use the cluster analysis algorithm within Incognition, which is an unsupervised classification approach. And this generates a raster layer with your class classes that you defined before. If you want four classes, five or six, just how unsupervised classification works. And then you can use this raster layer and then the multi-threshold segmentation to generate image objects based on the initial raster created via this cluster analysis. Okay, so these were the four examples that I prepared for the multi-threshold segmentation. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new and hopefully gonna use this algorithm in your next project. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. If you have questions or comments, please post them underneath the video. Have a good day and see you next time.